Today I want to talk about JSON and parsing responses from an API. So let's say we have an API, so we're just going to require the net HTTP, require JSON, set our URL to an API, and then we'll create the URI, and then we'll just call net HTTP get the URI. And you'll see that we'll get a response with a user ID, ID, title, and body. So we want to be able to work with this response with our application. So we could just call json.parse and then the response that we got back from the API. And you'll see that it then formats it nicely. So if we just set a variable, I'll just set it to r, and then we can call r quote id, and then we can get the id of that response. And if we want to parse our response and convert the names to a symbol, then we can just pass in symbolized names when we're parsing our JSON. And you'll see that instead of having a string, we now have a symbol for our names. So we can call symbol and then get our ID. And we can do the same thing for like the body. We can also create a key value by just passing in a new symbol and setting this to whatever we want. So now inspecting our symbol, you'll see that we have our user ID, ID, title, body, and now our new key value, name, and cobalt. And we can also parse the API response as an open struct. So we'll just call json.parse response, and then we'll pass in object class open struct. And what this will allow us to do is we can now just call struct.id, then we can call struct.title, and we'll get our responses. We can also even call on any of these, we can add in attributes. So if we create one like dot name, we can set this to our username. And you'll see it takes it in. And if we want to convert our open struct back to a JSON hash, we can just call struct.marshalldump and it'll convert it back to an hash and you'll notice that it does keep our new attribute that we included. And we are also able to do all of this with HTTP party. So if we just call our API, you'll see that we get our response. Then we can just call in our standard passing in the json.parse, and then we'll get our response. We can also convert our JSON response to an open struct, and then we can also symbolize the names. And we can still take our struct object and call Marshall dump on it to convert it back into a JSON hash. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.